And I'd like to ask Linda to come on up and talk to us about traditional textbooks, e-textbooks, hybrids, e-chapters, etc. etc. Thank you. Um, I'm Linda Riggins. I'm the bookstore, um, well, Wildcat, Chico State Wildcat store with the new name. I'm the book division manager. I started there 18 years ago, and I'm still in the same department, and we've changed quite a bit in those 18 years. Um, the one thing I want to address is the options that we have at the bookstore for, for the students, for faculty, um, both. So we offer uh, new textbooks, used textbooks, new rentals, used rentals, and we have electronic. We have course packs also, but I'll address that at a little bit later time. But price point for our students is new, new rental, used, electronic, and used rental. So there's several options for students um, when they're deciding whatever their economic uh, situation is at the time of purchase. The rental is the most affordable for, for the students at the beginning of the term. Purchasing would be the next affordable if that book is readopted because they can consume the content of that book, pass their, their tests, get their units, and sell back their book for 50% of purchase cost. That applies when we have a readopted book, which means we have to have the book order prior to buyback in order to say, I need to buy it back from my students because I just can't buy back books and store stock that, that we're not going to use. So it's all based on supply and demand. Uh, we have buyback com uh, companies come in to do our buyback, and they're outside. And what they do is I give them my list of these are the books I want from my students on campus, and then they will purchase anything that I do not want. So students have, it's not that they're being turned away because I don't want the book. You know, they will be offered a price nationally for that book, unless it's out of print or that uh, could be a components missing or something of that sort. So I uh, determine those buyback prices by by looking at six terms of history. So I know the size of the classes, the actual enrollment, the what we, we ordered and what our sell-through was, what we did buyback. So I can look at the history, all of these things, and consider what are we going to do this time because this is pretty much what has happened before. The thing I don't know is, did they purchase that online and not come through the bookstore? So where I show a sell-through of 10, but actually 25 students had the book in class, and then they come through buyback, and I'm only buying 10. So there's, there's factors in there I just can't possibly know, you know. But we, we do our best to try to buy back as much as we can from our students on campus, but uh, we only know what came through the bookstore. Um, buyback, or, oh, sorry, do you have a question? Yes. And now they have these expensive textbooks and they're ready to uh, send darts my way. Where can I direct them to go for my back? So, from what I'm hearing, is they're not going to bring it back if I don't adopt the same book for the following year. Is that correct? Term. term. Because buyback happens at the end of term. So, what I'm buying in May of this year from the students who purchased this spring. Is to fulfill the requirements for fall. Right. So if I'm going to adopt a new book for fall, the one they currently have, they, um, they need to go somewhere else. To buy, to, to, they can't buy it back at the bookstore. Right? Well, they, they can sell it back. It, I wouldn't buy it back if, if you didn't create a readoption for, right. for that book. But the company that's, that come in and do buy back for us, they, they know on the retail market across the nation what used books they purchase for, okay. which is a, basically a wholesale price. And how do you get a hold of that list? So if I have an option to tell my students I'm not going to be adopting the same book back next year, where do they, how do they get a hold of the companies that do buy that? They don't have, it's at my, it's at my store. You still do it? 
We still do it. It's at my store. It's just an outside company. They, they come in and conduct the whole buyback. Okay. Just at the second floor of the bookstore. Okay. So also on our website, they can um, check pricing of buyback. Okay. So um, the other thing is uh, bookstore purchasing versus online purchasing which is eBay or Amazon, which is available for all students. Um, the one thing that we do provide our students on campus is refunds. If um, they purchase through us, dropped classes, withdrawals, medical leave, canceled books, any of that, we, we will defective uh, all of those things. We just uh, will do a refund on it. And um, the other thing we do is programs. So students who have VA um, vouchers, or vocational rehab, um, DSS, any of those needing uh, a purchase order and they don't particularly have cash, we can we take care of all of that type of thing too. Um, okay. E copies of traditional books, which are digital copies. Uh, any textbook that comes through the adoption process, I check the database, not I in particular, but April or I, we check the database and any book that has an ebook available to us, we adopt. So it's available. I mean, it, not that uh, students have to purchase that, it's just another option if they want to. Yes? So last fall, I uh, tried to adopt an ebook and the student said that it was more expensive and I've actually spoken to the book buyer. So uh, to me, that normally I would go back to the publisher and, and say what my faculty is looking for that is not packaged with all the components because that happens with textbooks also. That it's not just a textbook, you know, that there's components in there that make a new sale versus a used sale and that type of thing. But for an e-book, which e-book was that? Or we can talk about this uh, later, but... Right. But what I don't know is when we called the publisher what they gave us. Because apparently we would have had two different ISBNs. You would have had just a text only ebook yeah, ISBN. ISBN directly from the publisher. Right. And he said that it should have come like the See, I'd have to look from our end what what happened when, when we contacted the publisher because that's what we do. We get an adoption. The first thing we do is, is contact the publisher. We're looking for pricing and availability. We have to make sure it's available. Then we go, we look for what's in stock. Uh, we have in stock what's on campus, which would be buyback. Then we go to what is on the used market. So for us, not in the electronic form, but as far as books, that's that's our process. You know, every every book, but electronic books for us is normally in our da database. But if there's something that's not in our database, we would contact the publisher on that. So, I would like to look into that that situation. You know, if you get a minute, if you can email me the information so I can pursue that. Um, most of our our Electronic books are through CourseMart or VitalSource. We've been using, selling electronic books probably for about five years. And um, I know last term we, we had two, about 250 books available and we sold approximately 400. Um, the Chancellor's Office, um, 
has been developing a partnership between publishers, some publishers, and um, to to develop these digital rentals. And they did put the press release out on that on February 22nd. And um, this is something I think James is going to talk about later. You're going to talk about the bio book. Yeah. Um, we pilot. We piloted that program in fall of 2010. Uh, Chico State and, and two other schools. So um, it has evolved from that point until what, they're, what they are offering now. But, uh, so that will be a new one coming and uh, more affordable uh, when, when it's used through the Chancellor's Office. Um, hybrid, uh, traditional, and e-textbook supplemental material. We, we have custom textbooks. Faculty go to the publishers and they say, well, I only use this section, you know, and this chapter, and, and they just go through the books. If there are two books at McGraw, they can combine the chapters out of those two books into one book. It's bound. It looks just like a book, but it's a custom cover. The one thing about it is it's only good at Chica State. So... As long as it's readopted, we buy it back. So it's not like a disposable or a book that someone's going to put on their shelf and keep. We would buy it back from those students if it's readopted. So um, we have those, and we um, you all also have to remember there's there's just no buyback value on the open market. I, I think buyback always comes into play for me because you know it's you sell it in the beginning and then you sell it back during the end, which totally cuts their cost in half. So um, the ebooks with supplemental materials, uh, we have several of those. Uh, right now, I just looked on my shelf, and we're at the end of the selling season, but we currently have 15 electronic access codes that include the electronic book along with uh, supplemental study or homework materials. Uh, there's no printed text, so it's all combined in one access code sell it, they go online, they have, they have everything, uh, just not in a printed form. We also carry two electronic access codes from the United Kingdom, um, and so they send us the access codes, we package them, and, and we sell them. And that has a ebook and a simulation uh, project in there for them. So, um, it works, you know, if faculty have pursued these, these things and, and worked through them. And that, that particular one from the UK, uh, it's been, this is our third semester. And sometimes we have three different classes, sometimes we have two, but it's, um, it works for their class. E-chapters, um, Cengage offers that process where students can go on and purchase from them a chapter at a time of a book and you pay per chapter. Um, if they were to do that, every chapter, it would be more costly than the printed text. But there's times when maybe a student wouldn't need certain chapters. They don't feel that they need them. Um, so that's available to them. Uh, the printed course packs is, we offer course packs through the bookstore. And we partner with the university print shop to create those those packs, and when needed, we secure all the um, copyright permission, which protects the university and the faculty member. Um, we pay all the royalties on those, and now we have purchased a new software package. It's called Omni, and this allows us to make sure our packets are accessible in alt media which is a big thing because before um, DSS, oh, ARC, um, would have to, to redo these packets for, for those students who, who needed the alt media. And so now we can do that. So then uh, we will have that all taken care of before it ever has to go back to DSS, back to the print shop. 